Hey what's going on guys, how all you are doing, welcome to a new video tutorial from IPNOS. In today's one, we are going to cover or talk about APIs. So what are APIs, I'm going to explain them briefly and we're going to go through like a real world example I've created in here just to let you know or to like let you know or better understand how API works and why they exist anyway and why they are for very very useful especially for web developers. So what actually are APIs? API is the shortcut for or stands for application programming interface and what does that mean actually is it's like kind of a software or tools that are gonna help you create your application so it's just as simple as that so these like two terms on the software terms like are the set of tools resources and or debugging tools that are gonna help you or libraries that are gonna help you create or achieve such such a functionality create such an algorithm or I don't know parse such data and on the like server side or like the web development side is like a server you request from and you're gonna get you data and stuff like this so like the web development thing it's much more easy to understand much more easy to interact with so that's what I have created an example in here I'm gonna show you or walk you through about uh, step by step on that I'm gonna show you what is APIs actually and why they are very very or super useful for us as web developers or as a as, as software engineer Anyway, so for APIs, I've created that very, very explanatory or self-explanatory example or server in here. As you can tell, I'm using Visual Studio Code in here. So I've created this or API server. Uh, if you're not familiar with uh, like creating servers in Node.js and Express Framework, I really do recommend go ahead and watch the uh, Node.js series I've done in the channel. So just go to the channel of videos and you can find node.js series in there make sure to watch it before continuing this one because it's gonna help you a lot understand what i'm actually doing in here so first we're gonna cre just create a server over here as simple as that we just create a server and for example and here we use the body parser then for this one we are using the access allow origin and why actually this one is because we, when we submit an ajax request from another url or from another domain let's say there's a domain called ipnews.com and we want to submit an ajax request from another domain called facebook.com that just for example so when we try to submit that if you're not going to allow the headers to go through uh, back and forth on the server and the client itself this is gonna gonna work so we must do this one for it to work so you can check out this example on the end of the video so you're gonna find it in github just go to the github repository our github repository ipnos and you're gonna find all the code in here you can just grab it and play with it or manipulate it however you want so here we just created a pokemon's uh, we're gonna for example or this example actually is specifically for pokemon so i just love pokemon's just happen to be so pokemon's We've got here a name of Pokemon and ability, what a Pokemon is capable of doing. And here just a route, a simple route that I'm gonna return a Pokemon list. So that Pokemon list gonna like return the list of Pokemons. And the other route is added a Pokemon. And the last route is remove a Pokemon from this array. So just for this specific example, what I'm using an array or like uh, server stored array so for a much more real world example all of this data is going to be stored on a database for example my sql or my or mongodb or any other kind of database service out there but this one needs to be stored on a database do not store into a server sign in here because this is a really really bad thing to do not going to help you or not going to work or not going to make your uh, application even an application at all so here actually I'm um, having to remove uh, Pokemon so all we do is just look through and find the Pokemon that we're going to send using the request so we're gonna send that from the uh, request and we're just gonna find it and remove it then send or send a response containing like success and Pokemon removed successfully then reload the page so it kind of seems a bit complicated but as you go with it or just go through that walk with step by step read it carefully and alongside just understanding how Node.js works it's gonna help you a lot you're gonna understand it's very very easy and very super useful thing then we'll listen just on the port and we start the server so let me just start the server I haven't already so let me API server.js uh, just start it up here so we should see server running at port 33,000 we are running to port 3000 now, what I've gone and do is create an index.html. So this is like the server, the API is the server, the server has the data. Then we are going to submit the server, go to the server and send it some kind of a request. 
and actually when we send the request the server takes that request is gonna parse it and like check all the parameters the data i'm gonna send on the request take that data and parse it then returns us a response containing some useful data as well so this the data is gonna be like responded or sent as a response it's gonna contain also a useful data we need so this is how actually APIs works is just a request and respond and all those kind of things. And this is like the term of server and client things. So as I've said, I've created an index.html and this is representing the client side. I've just gone and created a form for creating a new Pokemon and a list for showing the available Pokemons actually. And here for the query API.js, let me just grab this one in here and close this one. I don't know opening all of this kind of confusing things. But as I've said, I have index.html create API, which is gonna help us query from the API or from the server API in here. We're just using jQuery for submitting an Ajax. Also, another thing I wanna mention, if you're not gonna, or if you're not actually familiar with Ajax, and if you can like actually understand why Ajax is so important or why you're using it in here, I really do recommend going in like in the channel. I have dedicated a full dedicated video about Ajax in a real world or practical example so just go ahead and check it out and then come over back in here and you can clearly understand what I'm actually doing in here so as I've said we have a few power functions in here to request from the API then do it or like use or like submit it to our index.html the DOM so let me just open up this index.html to show you what it actually is so open in default browser this should open up index.html over here. And as you can tell, here is it. So this is just it. I've created that. It's a very simple thing. Here you can add a new Pokemon with entering the name of Pokemon, the ability. And here you can tell this, like the listed Pokemon. So it grabs this from the server. If we go to the server and go to, all the way down to the array, you're gonna find the same ones in here. So no changes, all of them are listed on the server array here. So all we are doing is just submitting the API and getting that back now if you try you no know, pokemon for example i don't know you can use here picacho and this is new ability and try to add a pokemon you get i'm just using here allows you get pokemon out successfully reload and you get new pokemon listed in here if you go to the server you're not gonna see that array changes but as you can tell in here i have just used the console.log and as you can tell we have new pokemon added on the server so all we have done is sent a request to the server then the server responded back and what actually the server responded back with is just that response if we go to the add, add pokemon route this is what we're using to add a new pokemon is responding with a static success and a message call or message contains pokemon added successfully and just reload sure so this is how it actually works a request and response it's very very simple if we now try to like i don't know delete the new pokemon that we have just created we've got pokemon removed successfully and boom the pokemon um it has gone nice so it's as simple as this is how API works and as you can tell in our application in here we don't have any instance of this data at all so all we do is just to call an API and try to grab the data from it or change something on that server so all we're doing we're interacting with this server we have created in here we have no control over this data on the server I mean this Pokemon's list over here unless we just call or submit a request into the server and server handle that request and just give us a response back. So all this, how, why it's IPS is very, very useful. So you have a piece of data on such kind of server, let's say user data, private data, and you just submit uh, like a request to that to that server specifically and you get like you want to change something you want to change your username for example you submit to that server and you have that data in here so you tell the server to change your password and the server or your username actually and the server gonna like respond back with success your username has been sent changed successfully and probably the new username or not so it's how, this is like the basic structure of it you can go through this code but all we do in here let me just ex example or like explain the api and to better understand that i have to use in here 
as the um let me just open up postman so if you are not familiar with postman it's just a tool that gonna allow you to send http requests and parts of data and it's best you use it for testing apis and this is what we're actually going to use it for just testing this api and telling what it does in here so let me just walk you through that we have a route in here we create a route pokemon's list so whenever we request that route over here so po forward slash pokemon list and we, are, we should use the get request for that we're just gonna tell it uh, if the pokemons in here are not empty which indeed are not empty in here the array is not empty and we just return response status success and with the pokemons pokemon so we send it json and a pokemons pokemons and like the list of the pokemons or the array of pokemons in here and pretty much most of the time apis sends back or works with json so like json are the most used data types to send or to like for apis to work to interact with the user to send him back data and to send data to the server actually in order to parse it so all you knew all you need to know about json if not already is just some data type that gonna it's just works like an attribute in here and a value then an attribute and a value and it can hold any data type in here integers strings anything at all you can use it and put it into this one so you can also put arrays as you can tell have pokemons in here arrays and we send it back this is all we do so now after postman has been already or successfully opened up so let me just resize this in order to exactly fetch that or fit it so here what we need to do is use or like submit the url in here we're telling so forward slash pokemon's list means the http local host since we are starting on 3000 ports and pokemon's list and make sure to use the get request since we're using the get request in here just send it back or send it to the server and we should get some useful data back to us so here we have got i don't know how to like maximize this or something but okay, so we have got the data in here, status success, Pokemon switch successfully, and the Pokemon's list itself. So this is how it actually works. So we just submit a request and we get this response over here, depending on what the server provides us. If the server won't provide this one, so it's not gonna work actually. So we can't access this one or we can't access this array until or unless the server give us that, and which means he pro or he provided a route with like a get request requests in order to return the specific or the specified data we want to get so this is how it actually works it's very really simple this is for the get request for the post request in here as you can tell we have using or we are using actually the post request and we are submitting or telling it to the added pokemon route so whenever we submit that we're just going to console log the data we have received from the request body pokemon name and this happens to be or the data that I'm gonna send on the request in order to add a new Pokemon. So for adding new Pokemon, we need to add the new, like the Pokemon name, the Pokemon ability, then we send it to the server and then the server, or the server actually uh, gonna store this on a database. In another example for us, we're really just using this quick array thing, nasty thing. Uh, don't use this, please don't use this, use a database. So, yeah, as, we I, as I was telling, so then we're gonna just use pokemons.push and then push the new Pokemon over here in very, very simple way. So I don't know what I'm having here, so let me just delete this one. Okay, here, and we just send back the po message Pokemon successfully with a reload. Now, if we try to submit this one, uh, I believe I have this one in here, so add a Pokemon. Um, let's see. Yep, I have this one. And make sure on the body, if you're going to use that, make sure to use XWL form URL encoded because this is what makes it read the data and put in here the data, yeah, the Pokey name and the Pokey ability. Since we are specifying the Pokey name and Pokey ability, you need to access it under the body and uh, request body Pokey ability. So make sure both of these like uh, values in here like matches unless it won't work and here we just send it over back send Pikachu electric lighters for example another Pokemon and we try to send this one 
and we wait and we get message Pokemon on the successfully if we go to the server we can see in here since we are console logging in up here we see in Pokemon or Pikachu electric lighter so like if you're confused a bit this server and this client thing are completely different things this one is going to be like the other half of the world and this one on your computer so like your browser is running this one and the other one is located on somewhere on China or somewhere on USA I don't know something like this but like completely different things do not match or mix between them so they are not the same thing this one has no access to this one unless they use APIs as we were talking about so also for the remove Pokemon if we just submit here remove Pokemon and before that let me just go here and explain this so also we're using a remove Pokemon route and whenever we send a post request we're gonna just like console out the Poke name and here all we need we don't need the ability for searching for a Pokemon and deleting it from the array or to better say from the database. So all we need is the Pokemon name and in most scenarios you're not gonna use the name. You go you you're actually going to use a unique ID that is just assigned for that particular object only so you don't get some data deleted by mistakes or something like this. So this as as I've tell use an ID and here we're using Pokemons and Pokemon's not an empty array, just double checking things and Pokemon for each, looping for each Pokemon and then pushing it or creating a new array but not including the one we need to delete then replacing the original one so as simple as that we create a new array we do not include the one we want to remove then we replace in here as you can tell we're setting the pokemons this is the original array to the new array that have been created and that's not including the pokemon that we want to remove so here this on this array the new pokemon that we have submitted here the pokemon name that has been removed is does not exist on this array and just happens to replace it with this one and this is how it's actually done it you can use any other algorithm to do that but this is my way to do it and this is all we need to do so then we send response json and as I've said, JSON is mostly used a data type thing. Then we send it Pokemon remove successfully. Now if we try to submit this one again, we just get Pokemon remove successfully. And here Pikachu, as it happens here, we're constantly logging the name. So it just works as simple as that. This is how actually APIs work. Imagine it as a server and a client and a client is sending a request, then a server parse that request, handle it, I don't know, do some changes on the database, do something according to what the like the user or the client sent on his request. So he's saying something and just send him back a response, whether an error response, whether an exception response, whether a success response, and it happens to be in here. Also, you can have here, as you can tell, uh, a status error, which does not gonna work and so on and so forth so this is how it actually works it's very very simple very very useful for you as a web developer and very very su or super useful for you to use it for your like website for your data you know to make it more reliable and more useful and very very easy to work with so as i've said this is all of it you're gonna find this application or this quick demo in here using pokemons you can add you can delete i don't know just add a Pokemon and try to test with it. It's a really, really nice thing. You can get his one on the GitHub, the link in the description below. I'll be very happy to have your thumbs up, point us, comments if you can. And yeah, that was it actually guys. I will catch you in the next video tutorial.